so now let me start the session uh, still the speaker has not joined yet but let me give you a brief introduction so hello and welcome everyone to another session in the data hour series we are thrilled to be here with you this evening for a session full of action packed learning i am parthagera part of the data science team at analytics with you for those who have joined us for the first time let me give you a brief introduction of the data hour sessions the data hour is a series of webinars conducted by analytics vidya and led by top industry experts it is a fun way to understand the concept of data science from the leading players in the data tech domain so as the name suggests it's just an hour dedicated to data we are hopeful that these sessions are going to be great source of enrichment and value addition to our community members now on to our session which is going to be today which is on explainable ai its need and implementation today ai powered by machine learning is mainstream in several businesses across verticals however there is skepticism in certain verticals on the power of machine learning to be able to perform complex tasks without a rationale of why is the machine learning model giving this result the area of explainable artificial intelligence was introduced to provide explanations for the decisions made by the machine learning model in this data hour nilima wabugari ma'am will provide a hands on intro to explainable artificial intelligence i hope you all are excited to attend this data hour with us well before we kick things off and i hand it over to our speaker a quick recap over certain things so we are recording this session and we will make the recordings available in a few days on youtube channel please use the q and a session section for asking any questions you might have during this session or any question which comes up to your mind during this session of the data hour as the data hour progresses also we will share a poll about the feedback of the session towards the end and i request you all to kindly fill it up now on to our speaker in this session of data hour we have nilima wo bugari ma'am who is the ceo at tara artificial intelligence and coo at ellen short with us let me give you a brief introduction about her Nilima Ma'am is a seasoned entrepreneur with extensive IT experience of over 20 years. She is certified data scientist with a degree in data science from John Hopkins University, Maryland, USA. She is currently CEO at Tara Technologies, a multi-artificial intelligence and machine learning competency and consulting firm. She has recently been conferred the prestigious Woman in Artificial Intelligence Award. which only which is only given to a select women leaders in data science and artificial intelligence my friends she is a strong innovator has filed three patents in the area of artificial intelligence and provides innovative solutions to over 20 artificial intelligence consulting projects for marquee clients for those who don't know the meaning of marquee marquee basically means well known and well publicized well now over to our speaker nilima ma'am the virtual stage is all yours hey thank you thanks for the warm introduction and as uh, as a representative of av analytics vidya has introduced i am nilima i have uh, two companies one is where i am the ceo and uh, that is tara technologies where we are fully into skill development and consultancy on the ai projects and ai ai and related technologies and the other company i am into is ai insured uh, where our product ai insured is into helping ai products build trustworthy ai and there we use explainable ai left and right and that is the reason this topic of today's is of great interest and passion for me thanks thanks analytics vidya for giving this opportunity so shall i start the session uh yes ma'am uh you may start the session if you wish to or you can even start the session after 2 to 3 minutes so that we can wait for 2 to 3 minutes more for more participants to join if you don't mind 
I don't mind. I wouldn't mind. But uh, uh, hi, everyone. I have given a brief profile of myself, right? Uh, I would, it would be great if I get to know generally uh, if you people know what is AI. I'm not asking you fully hands-on expertise, but do you have a minimum understanding of what is AI and what is machine learning, things like that? Just to understand the profile of yours. Yes, yeah, a good uh, Srinivasan, Samun, this very same, many of you, Rova, Stephen says, yes, Kya says, yes, Nabila says, Subrati Pati says, wonderful. And it also says, yes, that's great. And this helps me understand. Uh, you see, when I'm talking to people who do not know AI, I may have to be a little more detailed. That is the reason I was asking you. Good Shravan Kumar, good Tayaba, good Deepak Talekar. Yeah, AI is part of ML and it's automation. Wonderful, Deepak. That's great. Yeah, Yash says, yeah, is to make the machine intelligent and smart. And of course, humans dumb. <laughs> That is the reason we want AI okay, explainability. Yeah, I'll explain that more in detail. But we are dependent on AI system so much that sometimes, sometimes we become helpless. But again, we have to understand AI to make it more. We have to leverage it here, yeah, right? For that, we need to understand it. Yeah, Ashish says ML for sentiment analysis. Yes, one of the applications of ML is sentiment analysis. Mostly, typically, sentiment analysis is done as part of text and using uh, sentiment analysis is typically applied on the text, but it can be applied even on the images that is still as a research area. So yeah. data analytics using ML from great learning, Rajendra Maestri says, yes, he is using ML from great learning. It seems wonderful, Rajendra, that's good. So keep your questions open. And yeah, once I explain explainability in yeah, AI, then probably you can ask more questions. Yes, ma'am. So I think if you want to start with your session, you can now. Yes. Okay. That's good. Wonderful. I see so many people, 80, 80, and yeah, uh, every second is ticking, and then I see more people. That is wonderful thing. So to start with the session, let's have a big round of applause to yourselves. All of you applaud for yourselves because you have come to the right place to understand the right technology just learning ml and AI at a time and then getting into job does not end the purpose if you have the real passion if you have the real passion attending sessions like this and upgrading your skills is definitely a wonderful thing you may not be able to upgrade your skill but just by attending a one hour session right but the, this shows your passion to know more and probably if you're more passionate you may get into that particular core subject that'll be good yeah, so big round of applause again. Yeah, so maybe you can just say clap or you have clap symbol, right? That will help me understand you are really applauding your kids. Great, Shravan, Shravan has applauded for himself. Wonderful, Shravan. Yeah. Others too, I'll be happy. Yes, too. Yeah, each of you have Siddharth says, Samud, Samudesh first, Srinivasan also says the same. That's good. Reason... Yeah, 92 people have joined. That's wonderful. Siddharth, Sheri Prashant. This is this is not just one hour, but plus one hour on your over efforts. So oh, is it? Okay, I don't know that. Okay, Rajendra, Shravanan. Yeah, wonderful. Yes, Umesh, John, Gitesh, Bishwash, Sandhya. Uh, wonderful. I understand. Velour, yeah. That's good. Shailendra, Shoni. Yeah, someone has raised the hand, I guess, right? Who's that? Yeah, one of the attendees has raised the hand, Ashok, is it? Is it by mistake or what is it like? Yes, ma'am, that person might have raised his hand. So guys, you can raise your hand using emojis. You can wave your hand using emojis in oh, order no. to interact. Yeah, yeah, Ashok did it by mistake. That's that's fine too, Ashok. Wonderful. Yeah, uh, that is the most important thing that is needed when you are trying to learn something new. Okay, you should not have any inhibitions in asking questions. And yeah, yes, hands on is also part of this webinar, Vijay Lakshmi. But again, due to the time constraint, I will only be doing hands on on my system, and you will not be able to do it on your system because. Uh, there are many installations that are part of it, uh, of the simple example that I'll, it's not a simple example, it's a 
it's an example, but for you to run it on your system, it will take good amount of time. So one hour may not be enough. Okay, that's good. So we have hit the count 100. So shall we start the session now? Okay. The most important point I want to tell you is in machine learning, I know most of you have learned machine learning, right? You can represent the data in multiple different formats, whether it can be in the form of images or it can be in the form of text, it can be in the form of audio, it can be in the form of video, or it can be in the form of structured data, or it can be uh, simple time series data, like symbols, right? Now, whatever is a type of data, machine learning algorithms will detect the type of data and understand and derive insights and use it for the purpose of the business. It, it need not be, I mean, when I say it's a business, it need not be a business which is earning money. It can be, it can be the target, whatever you're trying to do. Ah, I will share Raju, just, I'm just briefing out. So in some time I'll share the screen, definitely. That's good. In the meanwhile, analytics uh, with the, I don't I have missed out your name. Uh, whoever is anchoring? So, yes, ma'am. My name is Parth. Parth Agheda. Yeah, yeah. Parth, uh, would you please stop your screen share? Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Uh, so in AI, which is again machine learning is part of AI, right? All of you, some of you have smartly answered that before even I asked that part. Now, what do we do? We derive insights from the data to uh, derive insights, and then sometimes. You just stand by there in creating dashboards and these dashboards will be helpful to understand the data and use it for our business purpose. But many a times, artificial intelligence especially, you're not stopping at simple data analytics. Instead, you're applying algorithms on top of it to build models, AI models. These AI models are the softwares, are the softwares, right? Effectively, these AI models, when you apply algorithm on this data, on the data that is given to you, which could be relevant, again, this build AI models. These models are the softwares on which we rely. We give input and then get output. We just trust these models, right? How do we trust the models? Because of experience, probably we have known that these AI models give good output, example. Example, when you're using Google Maps, if you have to travel somewhere from, from I'm giving some location in Bangalore because I'm from Bangalore. Let's say I'm traveling from Banagata Road to Dairy Circle or, or Majestic. I'm giving some location. If I have to, if I don't know the name, uh, if I do not know the route, what I would do is I'll just trust the Google Maps and give the location. And it would give me the output. Whether the output is optimal or not, I only trust it because it has been working from long time and many, many people are trusting it. Whether I'm okay, I'm okay. Even if it shows me a route which is five minutes slower than the actual optimal route, but it claims that the route it has shown me is the optimal route. Even then I'm okay with it, right? That's okay. Five minute delay is okay for me. But sometimes it happens that when we are relying on AI models like this, like the way I have given you example of Google Maps, right? The way we are relying on Google Maps in the simple example that I've quoted. In this case, probably I'm losing a time of five minutes. That is okay. But when we are relying on models where it will predict my life, like AI products, which are used for detecting cancer, with just an X-ray is given as input to the AI product and the product will detect whether I am cancerous or not. And if I have to rely on it, how trustworthy should the model be? Don't you think the model should be trustworthy? Right? I want an answer here, please. Yes. Usha says yes. Wonderful. That's good. If... Only that is that happens only if I completely rely on the model. Now the question of how trustworthy is the model? How do you know if the model is trustworthy or not? I can't say. Let me use the model for on thousands of people and then can come to a conclusion whether it is trustworthy, trustworthy or not. Right? Even if there is a loss of one person, that is really very risk taking thing. So here comes the need for explainable AI. So we need an AI which actually explains what the model is predicting and how the model is predicting. So to gist it out, explainable AI actually helps us understand what the machine is learning. Okay, model is learning, not the machine, but the model. 
and what part of the input data is actually important and, and also how the model can be built more robust when we look at it in a data scientist perspective because it is we who build a trustworthy AI model, right? It is not the end user. End user is only using it. But we as data scientists have all the responsibility to build a trustworthy AI model so that at a time when the user wants to know how the model is working, we, we should be able to explain it. And for us, trustworthy, explainable AI is a tool to go ahead for them. Okay. Trial and error. Yes, perfect. Vijay Lakshmi, in the case of Google Maps, trial and error works perfectly. But are you okay to go for a software which, which will predict whether you are cancerous or not on a trial and error basis? No, right? Because that is putting our life at risk. Let's say you go for a product which will just take your x-ray and send predicts that you are not cancerous. And then would you stop it there? I wouldn't have done that because I love my life. Right, Vijay Lakshmi? That is thing. Trial and error works good when it is models like maybe maybe recommendation engines on e-commerce. It's okay even if the if the, if the recommendation engine on an e-commerce site is actually hinting you to buy some product which you may not have actually liked it. That's okay. Even if you buy it, okay, you probably lost thousands or hundreds of rupees. But what do you mean by many algos, Vijayalakshmi here? I didn't understand. Many algorithms. Yeah, I understand. Model outcomes often can make confidence level along with prediction. Yes. Now, coming to confidence levels. Confidence levels are only limited to the data with which you have tested. Right, Alec? Right? Is it on all the data? Is it on all the possible data? Now, when I'm, let's say I'm, I'm building a product and I, I have, uh, typically, uh, unless I have one lakh rows. So, I'm only relying, let us say, I've split the data into 75% for training and 25% testing. No, out of one lakh, I've used 75,000 for building the model. And yeah, data must be given. Ashish, you're perfect. Data must be given. But if the data that is given to you does not cover all the corner cases, don't you think you're in trouble, right? The 25,000 data that you have, does not cover all the corner cases. You are not sure if it covers or not. As a data scientist, you are not sure because that is not your duty. You say you are only relying on what the client has given. Right? Why do you worry about it? But there are techniques to understand that also. Again, our product AI Insured that does does that. So that is a reason. I mean, you can go to AIinsured.com to understand a little more on that. But coming back to this part, if we have explainable AI when you run the model when input is given to the model and then output is generated you clearly understand what is that part of the data which the model is focused on you will see it when i'm running at the last at the end of the session so don't worry just keep your questions to yourself no you can open up you can ask me but again if you're not clearly understanding how is that the model is focusing uh, will will understand which part of the data is important that part you can see later Yes, surfaces, more the data, better the prediction. But again, remember here, that is a wonderful thumb rule, more the data, better the prediction. But the data should be relevant. The more the relevant data, the better the prediction. Perfect. Again, when you say relevant data, the data should be covering all the corner cases. That is important. Yeah, A and AI insured.com. You just type .com there and www before that. So we have built a product called AI Insured, uh, which handles the security, privacy, and explainability of the products. And right now, it is only we data scientists who worry about explainability because we know that AI is not perfect. It is only probabilistic, right? The output is probabilistic. And we're also worried when we use AI applications for, let's say, fraud detection. When you're do doing fraud detection also, if you have proper, yes, uh, yes, that's perfect, yes. So Ashish and Shiva Prasad, that's the right one there. So when you're using the AI model, uh, you know it is probabilistic. It is not 100% sure. But again, you as a data scientist, how, how much can you do? You can only do whatever is the possibilities within your limits. The data that is given to you, you'll work on that. And yeah, you'll see that if there are explainable, I mean, I'll show you how to use explainable AI. When you have the tool of explainable AI, explainable AI is not a tool. There are algorithms. I'll explain it to you. <laughs> okay. Uh, 
Ma'am, please share screen. I'm not able to tell it. Okay, perfect. Rahul, till now I was only giving the introduction. Now I haven't shared the screen. Or oh, those of you who are thinking, now I'll start my screen share. Again, this is a PowerPoint presentation. You will be able to understand it even when I share the screen now. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Can you see my screen? Is my screen visible? Right? My screen is visible, right? Perfect. I'm not seeing slides. Are you able to see that here now, Amor, uh, Cham, Manish, Rahul? Okay, perfect. Yeah. So today we are explaining, uh, I mean, I'm going to talk about explainable AI. As I told you, machine learning is the core because of the recent advances in science and technology, every other company you talk about uses machine learning or AI to either enhance the product that it has or build a new product because machine learning is giving is working like magic. And why is this happening? This is only happening because of the... Okay, just one second. I want to check the time so that I'm not... okay fine okay ma'am i have no i will not be able to share the powerpoint yes okay yeah you got a response there you can see the recording yeah so why is that we are able to use machine learning from long time machine learning is there from 1960s okay artificial intelligence has been there along with machine learning from 1960s but it's only in the recent past that we have leveraged machine learning quite a bit. The reason is data is exploding and you generate data heavily now. I give you a statistics which was around four year old. Facebook alone was generating two million bytes of data per minute, four year back, not the recent studies. Now, uh, it is predicted that, yes, Along with the data generation, advancement in computing power has added to that. And that is the reason we use big data technologies on top of the data using artificial intelligence to build wonderful projects. Everything is fine as long as you see the project is working, the model you have created is working the way you want. But, but when it does not work, then comes the question, why is it that it is not working? When it's a simple example like e-commerce recommendation engine, that's okay. That's okay. Maybe there must be some intricacies. Uh, there must be some relations within the data which has made the uh, recommendation engine to suggest that, right? If that is something like a recommendation, that's okay for you. But if it comes to an example like cancer prediction or a fraud detection, if the fraud detection software that you have implemented detects a an eligible map or in eligible a legal transaction is a fraud transaction. Don't you think it is it is it's bad, right? Even if it is a fraud that is there and it was not detected as fraud, then it, it is a huge loss, right? So this is what false positive. Yes, false positive and false negative. Both are very important for us to handle, right? Yeah. Computer vision, I'll come to that. I'll show you an example on that. Okay. Now use it. So, we as data scientists try to do that and users are asked to trust the model. How long will the users trust the model? As long as it does not hurt them. And how do you know if it doesn't hurt them? Even if it does not hurt them, sometimes when it comes to healthcare or finance, of course, users are proactive because they can't risk their life or they can't risk their money and reputation, right? That is the reason we have to go for explainable AI. Now, like one of you was asking, right? Uh, I don't remember the name. Accuracy, aggregate measures, and that is, uh, there are many measures after you build the model to tell you whether the model confusion matrix is accuracy and the aggregate measures. These are all part of confusion matrix. This give you whether how accurate is your model. But, but again, if the data that you have taken does not cover all the corner cases. What is the data that you've taken? The test data. The test data is a part of the data that was given as input to you, right? Are you generating data? Are you generating test data? Are you making sure the test data has all the corner cases? No. And that is the reason we cannot 
at all rely on accuracy and aggregate measures or the configuration matrix or any other statistics. Yes, to prove, to show it to our client, maybe you use that, but again, that you cannot rely at all. Okay, and now I told you the need for explainability, yeah? but there is also whether we need it, uh, when we whether we think it is needed or not now, there are regulatory compliance standards that are coming across the world in multiple countries, which are mandating every software, every AI software company which is using it to be able to explain the relation between the input and the output. And when this comes, it is only explainable layer that you have to rely on. Again, I want to tell you one other thing. You would have heard about auto ML products, right? Uh, Google has come up with auto ML, where ML is generated automatically. So going forward, it is possible that it is possible that data scientists will mostly work on explainable AI than the actual ML. Because actual ML is anywhere we have tools like auto ML that are there, which take the input and understand there are some complications there and which builds an AM. So we have to rely more on explainable AI. Going forward, explainable AI is very important. Okay. Now, when I say explainable, there are some ex some explainable algorithms like decision tree, linear regression, random forest. Uh, can you tell me are these uh, are these deep learning algorithms or simple algorithms? Hello, can you tell me what is decision tree? Perfect. They're simple algorithms, right? You know what it is. When a decision tree is built, I'll even show you a screen of decision tree a little later, but okay. sorry. Yeah. So this is decision tree. I'm unable to, I'm unable, but there is some pop-up that has come onto my system. I don't know if I'm trying to close it. Okay. Perfect. Yeah. This is an example of decision tree. I know all of you are data scientists, so you know what is decision tree, right? Decision tree takes data and understands, interprets the data and comes up with tree like this. Based on the tree structure, it understands what the output would be when an input is given. From this, the rules are built. In the simple decision tree that I've, I'm showing here, if the outlook is an overcast, is overcast, then it will definitely rain. And if the outlook is rainy and windy, it will rain too. If the outlook is sunny and the temperature is either mild or cool, it'll rain too, right? So that, these are the rules that are built. So this, don't you think this will help you understand why is that the model has predicted whether it is rainy or not, whether it'll rain or not? Do you think so? Uh, Geetesh, just hold on. I'll come to that. I'll come to that. At first, I've started with decision tree. Yes, Sherry. Prashant, all of you, yeah. Okay. It looks like a flowchart. Perfect, yes. Even linear regression and logic restrict regression are explainable. Yeah. They also use the regression. Okay, I'll come to that part and also tell you why it is so. Okay. okay. Yeah, we have seen decision tree. Now let's go to linear regression. Linear regression is the first regression algorithm that you would have learned by default, linear and logistic regression, right? These are called interpretable algorithms where there is an algorithm that a model, not algorithm, there's a model that is built and the model is something like this. This is an example where, where I said 3x1 plus 4x2 minus 6x3 minus 20 will give me the output of y. Y is the output and x1, x2, x3 are the inputs. This is an interpretable model. It will also explain me why exactly that, what is the relation between the different input and why is that I'm getting the value of y, right? So this is already existent. This is also an explainable model. Decision tree is again an explainable model. I think most of you have, would have known about uh, random forest, right? What is random forest? What is random forest?
Yes, it's an ensemble of decision trees. Thousands of decision trees like this would be there as part of random forest along with that. So when we say decision tree is explainable, random forest is obviously explainable because random forest consists of multiple, an ensemble of decision tree. And it's not just that, you also have in decision tree, the different variables and what is there? Uh, there are different features, right? On which feature is actually adding more value? That we'll see. That is, again, these are all self-explainable algorithms. But if you noticed, if you noticed, most of the problems that we are solving, uh, I know most of your data scientists, but again, uh, because I, I interact with the clients and we get many, many requests from clients. Where we handle, we do consultancy and projects for uh, AI, on AI. So, there are many times where we have shied away from using deep learning and instead limited ourselves to using random forest. You know why? Because of the lack of explainability. Now, in deep learning, we have line. That is what we're going to explain a little later. I'm going to explain. But again, line is not self-sufficient in explaining all the data types. There are some complexities. In some of the cases, it is possible. Okay. So I think... Did you all get it till now? We use linear regression, decision tree. Ma'am, I am an MTech student from mechanical background, but wanted to shift my domain. We'll talk about it a little later. I don't know who I have. Yeah, Rahul. Okay. We'll talk about it later. Let me first finish that. Okay. Now, coming to feature importance in random forest, along with the fact that random forest is an ensemble of decision trees, it's also that we can understand the feature importance. Like in this example, we have GRE, GPA, and rank. Okay. Now, if you see the graph here, if you see the graph here, it shows one is what? GPA. Zero is GRE. Rank is two. From these, these are feature impo important graphs that are there as part of random forest. We can do that. And from this, we can understand which feature is of highest importance so that also helps us understand right why is that the output you're getting is so and so so feature importance can also be explained can you can we use bootstrap sampling for feeding the data into the model for classification issue we can but that doesn't solve the problem but random foresting have a thousand features wouldn't be considered a black box no it is not a black box random forest is not a black box when we go to deep learning it is a black box and there we go with line approach decision tree is fundamental research perfect yes that is the reason that is the reason we are going to talk about lime tree sorry uh, lime <laughs> yes we can use plot tree method yes we can do that but again the limitations of using random for random forest is the best among the decision tree and linear regression okay uh, when the data is complex, when there are some situations where we have gone for deep learning, there was no way out because the deep learning works the best over there, though it is a black box. And there we use line, and we have our own our own uh, product. AI yeah, ensured, I told you, right? Okay. Now, any questions before I go there? Uh, I'm open to questions. Yeah. Okay. That uh, when I don't get any questions in the chat, I presume you understood it. If I'm not answered, because I see many of you were asking questions, sometimes I would have missed out. But we have around 15 minutes, right? Uh, okay. Nor is it easy to understand how the different features. Yes. Nothing is easy. Yeah. It, but there is something existent, right? Uh, Rajiv, this is for you. Okay. It is not easy. Ex model itself is a complicated one but there is a tool for you to understand so using the these features we can develop okay and we can come up with nothing is easy as such because it's a complicated model when artificial intelligence in artificial intelligence, it is trying to mimic human intelligence so things cannot be so easy but there are tools and techniques which make it simpler for us and i'm only talking about those tools and techniques here yes we can see that plot underscore tree method yes uh, when to choose what models, ma'am? Yes, Valur, I'll come to you. 
there are ways there are there are uh, model agnostic explainable tools like lime lime does not really is not worried about which model is used in the model which uh, which uh, algorithm is used okay it is model agnostic and uh, uh, there are also local and global explainable ais random forest has how many types which are they okay uh, random forest you can look into but random forest has is a set of decision trees okay ma'am can you put some light on hyperparameter tuning hyperparameter tuning there are you know about hyperparameters right when you tune them then obviously we the word tuning means that you are making the value of the hyperparameter so apt such that the output is more relevant to us okay I cannot, because of a limited time, I may not be able to explain you what exactly, but in a gist, I'll tell you. Uh, aren't you using MacBook? Yes, I'm using Ashish. Uh, is interpreter different from explainable? Yes. Explainable AI only explains between the relations between input and output. I'll show you. Interpretable. See, some models are interpretable, like our random forest decision tree and uh, linear regression. When it comes to explainable AI, uh, I'll show you an example on the image, then you will understand it better. For feature selection, other than statistic analysis, do we have other techniques too? It is mostly statistic analysis and our domain expertise. So any AI application, we need to have a domain expert. Okay. Can we consider auto model is the best method? Not really. Auto model is never the, never ever the best method. When you rely so much on auto model, you should be ready to take risk. So no, definitely not. But yeah, when companies like Google come up on that, there will be a good amount of research that will be done. And auto model is probably helpful in simple regressions, like where you're using linear regression or logistic regression, where human intelligence may not be of greater value. It will automatically generate inter uh, what the different graphs that show the relation between different attributes. Okay, how do you define the values of for the hyperman? Uh, we'll define again that also needs expertise and we need to, there's no hard and fast rule over there. Okay, now let us come back to line. What is line? Line is locally interpretable model agnostic explanation. When it is locally interpretable, that, that means that we can understand, we can apply explainability on one single instance and it is model agnostic explanation when i say model agnostic it only means that there is no hard and fast rule that the model has to be built using this algorithm or that algorithm so lime works on any of the algorithm any of the models that are built on any of the algorithm irrespective of the algorithm that is used in the model building what is like okay its objective is to explain the result from any x classifier so that the human can understand individual predictions perfect line test what happens to the predictions when you give variations of your data in the machine learning model line generates you know what line does it along with the data we only give data to the line right input data and then the output that is generated but line actually process it such that it it actually creates divisions in the data is someone who's asking the question explainable has a method value shapley values how lime is different lime is different from shapley uh, there are, these are the two most commonly used explainable models for today i'm only explaining lime shapley is different you see uh, if i ask you how is uh, uh, svm different from i give some other algorithm time features are different right it is apt for us to understand which algorithm is better only based on the context and the data and the and the problem you're solving very similar to that. Okay, Lime is part of deep learning. Yes, Lime is part of deep learning. Uh, ML such as regression forecasting using different elements. Kindly guide me about that. Uh, Ma'am, uh, ma I would like to uh, tell one thing that uh, you can take questions at the end as well so that uh, your uh, presentation also doesn't get hindered, you know, because uh, students or the uh, the attendees will keep asking questions, but you can continue with your presentation, you know, because there is time yes. bound as well. Yes, Asmat Ali is also saying the same thing. So that's good. Okay, fine. So base, you, the data is split into, and uh, it's like permutations and combination. The data, if you take an image, the image is cut into different pieces and then uh, it'll create new set of data and 
the output. It maps the data, input data to the output and comes up with a model. Uh, I'll show you how it does. Don't worry when you see this, yeah. The original model is approximated by simple and interpretable use, usually a linear model. You don't need to get into the details of line when you're working on it. So I'm just giving you what is done internally, okay? Simple model is approximated for the input we are interested in. So it is said to explain the original complex models local behavior, not the global behavior. When you say local behavior, local behavior is only applied to the data item that you are working on. Global behavior, when you say global behavior, it is like applied on all the data on which it is processed. Okay. So we'll work on a real program line where I apply line on an image and show you how it works. So shall I, I'll show the program, okay? And and after that, let, let me open up for questions. Is that okay? Close your chat box. Okay. So I'm stopping my screen share. Yeah, is my Jupyter notebook visible? No, I will not be able to share the code, John. Okay. Uh, I have my constraints there. Okay, this is my company code and yeah, but I'm showing an example that should be okay. Uh, see, uh, all of you know, right? I'm working on a Google Collab, on my Google Collab, right, basically. So I'm mounting that, that you know, right? That's the first thing I'm doing. And after that, I have my program there. So I'm doing that too. I have got another row here. Can you give me a couple of minutes? I'll just stop my screen share, fix it.
हेलो हेलो नीलिमा हेलो या आई एम देयर माय प्रोग्राम देयर इज एन इशू देयर आई विल ट्राई टू एक्सप्लेन ओके माय कोड इज ओपन बट द प्रोग्राम इज नॉट वर्किंग बिकॉज़ देयर वाज अ क्रैश सो आई विल जस्ट शेयर माय स्क्रीन आई विल एक्सप्लेन इट टू यू ओके या नो वरीज you can explain it without running without running it <laughs> yeah yeah exactly but you need to have the images only then you'll understand it better so i'm trying to see the images is collapsed okay okay, okay. Uh, i don't know this google collapse suddenly is a problem here there is mm -hmm. So, ma'am, maybe you yeah, can. Yeah, I will share. I will share my screen. Just a minute. I'm not going to run it. I thought I will run it. Yes. That is the and I'll just share and then show you the output. I wish you will understand it. Okay. Now, uh, this is a simple mounting. Uh, the only thing is there was not much of a gap, and before that, what exactly I did this. So, Google Collab will give this error to me. Okay. Now I have another instance where it is working. I'll explain this to you and then come to you there. Okay. uh now this is a simple part where i'm mounting the google drive and then because my file is lime that is my program is here i'm going to that location okay and then i use tensorflow after tensorflow this particular tf_slim package is important which i have installed i'm also installing lime okay i would have run it but now i have to take a different uh, drive and then do that first i'll explain it to you and then from lime image see lime for images detail lime can work on images it can work on text data also now i'm trying to show you the example on the images okay now we are loading a pretrained slim model this slim model is a model that is built which will identify dogs and cats in an image okay this is a model that is already built i am not going to touch it i am only applying my line on top of this so i am here loading the model okay after that i am applying transform image for inceptions so hello can you hear me yeah okay uh, i am actually transforming the image because when i apply line i i need to have some transformation so that, there is a method for that which i have done it after i do that okay after i do that what i get it is i can get the predictions for the image now this was the image that was given as input to the model the model that is already built i have i'm not using lime at all okay this is an image that is given as an input to the model which detects whether it is a dog or a cat now i am only taking the top five predictions what is the first prediction here can someone tell me it is bernie's mountain dog right what is the first prediction yes it is bernie's mountain dog please read the full thing yeah name of the dog yes it is 73.19 there are different types of dogs right the other one is antlebusha and all the top four are predicting that it is a dog but the fifth one says it's a cat though the percentage of prediction is what we rely on right generally the more accurate you look into accuracy there taking taking into consideration that we have considered all the corner cases and the data is relevant and stuff like that so if we if you go with this model we will probably predict that this is a dog the image of this uh, the image of the image this image is of a dog but the fifth prediction also says uh it can be considered as a confidence yes uh, but again you cannot fully rely on it it can be considered as a confidence only when you are sure that the data is covering all the corner cases the data is very genuine and and covers all the corner cases 
code repo this is the code repo he probability same yeah okay now if you take this i'll explain you how explainability of line comes into picture we'll just scroll down basically i want to look at it uh, this way the top four predictions are saying that it is a dog the different varieties of dogs ratta jay lakshmi yeah but both are appearing no man what yeah both are appearing but why is that one of the predictions uh jay lakshmi you have raised your hand i'll come to you i'm taking screenshot for later no issues you can do that no issues yeah. i'll come to you jay lakshmi right uh, so he's asking velor sisi kumar is asking but both are appearing no ma'am yes both are appearing but why is it that our model is saying that this is dog and not a cat the first four instances it says only dog right and the fifth one says it's a cat it is a just a simple dog and cat scenario but we should understand why it is like that so if we come down now this was the model with five predictions now we are applying line here and for that again you use numpy and you are processing image by line this is a method where i'm giving the image as input and processing it this will take good amount of time now i also say show line expectations for image and i have given idx equal to 1 here idx represents the top five outputs and when i'm giving one i'm worried about the explainability of the first one so i'm worried about the explainability of the first one right so when i apply line when i apply line it says that it is only looking at this part of the image and that is the reason it has predicted it as dog okay now when when you look at something you probably look at one part of it and then decide right as a human being also but it's not just that one part you probably look at many many more things if i if i if i give you a, a screenshot of uh, of uh, let us say what a sofa maybe rectangular shape sofa the image classifier we are not sure if it classifies it as a sofa or a bed just because it doesn't know the size it it is only looking at the shape but where is that it is looking exactly it is looking at this part and so now you understand why is it that why is it, why is it that my model has predicted this image as a dog because your model in the first case where you said idx equal to 1 your model has considered this part okay now this part is again in the whole image this is the part that is the reason it has predicted that it is a dog and not a cat now let's go to the fifth prediction where it is it is counting it it is uh, predicting it as cat right so let's see what it is now i say id is equal to 5 and then when i give 5 it has highlighted this part which is the part what is this this is a cat right and so your predict your model is predicting it as cat now coming back to if you can share the lime zip link it will be highly appreciated for later reviewing lime zip link okay i i will share it i'll share it with the analytics with your team okay now uh, that you can okay now one of you was asking right uh, ma'am it has two right uh, why is it predicting only one right who was the one who was asking that question the image has both cat and dog why is it that it is predicting only whether it's a cat or dog one of you was asking that well basically our model that is written uh well, zip file ashish i'm not sure if i can i'll talk to my team okay whatever is possible i'll share with you okay don't worry i'll make sure that you understand it i will talk to my team and i may not be giving you the overall code but the code this particular one i'll be able to give it to you i'll uh analytics with your representative i'm sorry i forgot your name okay i will share it with you can you share it yes ma'am yes ma'am yeah. minus part so guys don't worry uh, we will share everything which we can uh, we will coordinate with ma'am and we'll share it to you later on so don't worry you will get it okay okay and now uh, one of you was asking that question right why is it that it is predicting only image because the classifier we are calling the classifier here right here print drop drop print top predictions for image this is only the the code inside this particular logic uh, or the program is only classifying for one image not all 
That is the way it is designed. Yes, it can also predict for blurred, distorted images. Yes, but maybe the prediction is not correct. And so if explainability is there, let's say this part, this part is bl blurred or maybe the dog was blurred. Let's say that though there is a dog as a human being, you are able to understand that it is a dog and a cat together, but this was highly blurred. Then probably it is possible that even the first four uh, predictions say it is cat. Okay, we'll look, uh, say see. Okay, now do we have time? I will try to see if I can execute it. We have only four minutes. So I'm trying to see if I can execute it. I have it located in a different drive too. I can log in and show it to you. Is that okay or you are done with it? No, ma'am, you can go ahead. I'm stopping my screen share. I'll try to log into the different drive and share it with you. Yes, ma'am. Uh, uh, apart, actually, I have joined, I have given, take, consider, I have joined the same link with a different ID as a participant. So, can you give me the share access over there as a participant? Yes, ma'am. As a yes, ma'am. Uh, I just did. It will take a minute. In this meanwhile, someone has raised a hand, right? What is that? Who is that? Heek. Heek, yeah. Tell me, Heek. Reporting in progress. Yeah, I'm now on two systems, so I'll share the system. Now, I am on a different system. It is more this one that's coming. So. Can you hear me now? Yes, ma'am. It's echoing actually. Yeah. It's not clear. I'm having both the systems. How is it now? Is it now? Still echoing. Yeah, I know. I'll just be a little. Yes, now it's, okay. now? Yeah, yes now, now it's okay. Yes, now it's okay. So here I'm executing it. Okay. I'll be a little slow. Just to make sure that this previous error doesn't come. Here I've put it as in a different folder. Okay. Lime explanations for image classifier. Guys, it will take time. Yeah. And do you have any buffer time? Pat? Okay, fine. Get it. Yes, ma'am. You can take a few minutes if you want to. Okay, fine. So this part you have understood, right? Now I'm mounting the drive there. I'm going to this particular location on my drive where I have the code. And that is the reason. But again, I'm printing the DIR. 
Now I come to importing TensorFlow and printing the version. Okay. This is important where I say TF underscore slim. This is mandatory. Yeah. You can take screenshots and if possible, I'll give you the code also. But otherwise, no issues if, even if you take screenshots. That's okay. Yeah. Now I'm installing line. Now we are loading the pre-train inception underscore v3. This is an image classifier available. This is a pre-trained model. The model is already existent. You understand right when I say pre-train. Okay. I'm loading that. Just loading that because I have to use it. Oh. I get an error again. This is because I think. Let me let me try. Problem is with the resource variable. The problem is I am trying to access it from a different system also, right? So I'll just explain it to you. Again, here we are transforming the image and giving this image as an input, right? See, one of you was asking, can you show the location? Uh, one of you was asking, where are the, uh, what, these images present, right? It is there in my drive. Here, do you see my dog, dot, dog image here? Can you see this? Dot, dogs, right? That is what I have loaded. I have transformed it and loaded. And then I'm just displaying the image. That's what you do, right? Once you load, you check to see if it's correctly loaded or not. I'm doing that. And then, and then this is a method that is there already in the loaded model where I'm trying to print the top predictions. Again, here I've mentioned it as five. I cannot change it because, you know, there is an issue. It's not working the way it is. Now, when I give five, it is only printing the top five. I have limited it to five or, or I have taken five just because the top four were predicting it as a dog for me. And the fifth one was predicting it as a cat. I wanted to show you why is that it is showing like that. That is the reason I've taken five. Again, contextually, you can change it, not an issue at all. After that, I am importing line. Okay. Uh, sorry, numpy. You import numpy and you process the image by line so you give the image and then number of variations you can specify the variation that is thousand times the image is processed when you specify the as i told you right every input that is given will be uh, divided into multiple pieces and then uh, aggregated together and then it is mapped with the output just to understand how the different parts of the input image in this case or input text are relevant to the output how they are mapped. That is what it tries to do. And for that, in this case, I have given number of variations as 1000. The more the number you give, the better it is. But you know, the more the number you give, sometimes it happens that it if you give very high, it, it uh, runs, of, runs out of space. And also sometimes it comes to a threshold value. So you have to limit it at that level. And uh, with experience, our team has realized that 1000 is a better number for this. And when I, sorry, I'm sorry, I'm just, it's not in my hand, I, I, I live in an apartment complex, so yeah, idx equal to 1, when it's space, idx equal to 1, that is the first prediction, I'm giving the first prediction, I want to understand, I want to know the, what is the explainability for the first prediction, and then it says, this is the explainability. Have you noticed it is only looking at it is only looking at uh, the dog image, right? Two parts of the dog face. That is the reason it is predicting this as dog. Now let's come to the fifth one. And the fifth one here says it is looking at only cat, right? That is the reason. The fifth iteration here. It says it is an Egyptian cat. There are varieties of uh, dogs and cats, right? It's an Egyptian cat is what it predicts us. 
So this is the way Lime works. I am going to share all the code with, uh, with Path. Okay. Uh, why cat tail is in dog image? Because the image is like that. In spite of that, in spite of that, Ashish, have you noticed the in, uh, the model is able to predict it correctly because both the images sit together in one single image. Dog and cat are probably sitting together for this. Okay, how you train the model here? Do we do we provide multiple images? Yeah, we provide multiple images because the model that I was talking to you about that is a pre-trained model where we have trained it for multiple combinations of uh, dogs and cats. It's not just the combination of cats and dogs, different images of cats, different images of dogs. Also. It's a pretend one. I'm not explaining on that part, right? So I didn't touch it. Okay. Feature. What, what do you mean by feature, Vijay Lakshmi? Mm -hmm. If the image is mirrored, will it recur? Yes, it will. Uh, Firzana, it will. Yeah. Farzana, I'm sorry. Yeah. We will try to mail everyone. Okay. Does the image of, uh, have any labeling? No. Uh, who is that Muhammad? It doesn't have any labeling. If it ha if it has labeling, then obviously you don't need to worry about it, right? There's no labeling here. That is the way I think you would have all worked on image detection. Okay. Yeah, when we are training, there will be little label, but not now. Uh, Muhammad, if you're asking about the training time, uh, yes, when we have trained, we will label all the images cat and dog, we will label them. But when we are testing, we will not label them. Okay, did it answer your question? Uh, as a hint, what is that, Ashish? Ma'am, give us more details as a hint. What hint do you want me to give? Please explain more about concept and working of line. Uh, Madhu, it's like this. Now tell me one thing. Uh, if when uh, when you're trying to explain, let us say dog to your kid, I don't know if you're married or not, but to a small baby who is just two year old. And the way you explain it to him or her would be, have you seen, have you seen the ears of the dog? If it is like this, they are dogs, right? You'll you'll try to explain him part by part. Do you do that, Madhu? Right? Every part you will try to explain him. If it is like this, you can say it is a dog. Yeah, there are some cases where it may not be a dog. You will give him explanation also. It is in a similar fashion Lime does. Lime learns it by itself. Now, this dog, let us say this image is there, right? What it does is it cuts these images into multiple parts internally, programmatically. And then in this image, let's say I had another image. Let's say I had an image of a dog. And I label it as dog because when I'm training, I label it, right? So it understands if the nose is something like this, okay, it has to be mapped to dog. If the eyes are something like this, it has to be mapped to a dog. If, if the ears are something like this, yes, it has to be mapped to a cat. If there is fur, something like this, not like the fur on a dog, but you know, there is a difference between the fur on the cat and the dog, right? And if the skin is like this, then it is the cat. So these, the image, which is labeled where you have an answer, you have the image of a dog and then you map it to dog because it's labeled. That image will be cut into multiple pieces programmatically. And then it says, okay, this part where the eye is, if there is a part, uh, there is a part like this on the image also, then we can map it to dog. Okay, so Madhu, do you think I have answered your question? By features, yes. Do you need to know the working behind LIME as a data scientist? We don't need to know Gitesh. But yeah, this is what we can know because this is what is explained. But if you're a data scientist who is keen, then you can work on it for around maybe six months. Five of you can sit together and five, well, six months, or two, and not six months, yeah, three years because it's a, it is quite very complicated. Uh, LIME is not a product of AI Ensure, but LIME is also used in AI Ensure. In one of the cases, we use like maths behind line, line is what I've explained now. Based on the expression, can we infer this model does not predict cats well? Not really. If you think, how many images have you tried now? You cannot do that, right? I mean, uh, can we infer this model? You mean the trained model, is it? Are you talking about that model, trained model? 
you see we cannot come to a conclusion just by one image that's what we do in testing right what do you do in testing whether you are a data scientist or a tester if you're a tester you know better you have to see that before coming to a conclusion we have to try multiple different ways it is possible that in this image the dog is closer right the face is properly visible in this image i think the cat is a little oriented that the other side the face of the cat is not properly seen it is possible because of that it is not seen can't you do for lemon we can do it but i haven't shown you that example now this is an image classifier for animals ashish if you have an image classifier for uh, for uh, fruits or vegetables we can try lime on that also provided you have an image classifier already done already present and then on top of it you can apply lime to understand how it is working any maximum size for the image before using lime there must be some restrictions but uh, no no as much as i remember no nothing like that high configuration images were used yes. but you can check it out no uh, it's possible i have mistake in there any other queries yeah is there a possibility that both are recognized with equal probability it is possible farzana provided you are i am talking about the pre trained model right the model there is only predicting one image because that that is the way it is designed let us say you have designed a model where you want to predict both the images how many other images are there on your photo on your picture that you give as input if you if you model it such that it predicts all the then then yeah lime also works well it shows now it shows this part and this part and as a data center you should be able to understand maybe this part it is considered for predicting it as dog and this part which is a cat it is predicting it as fox i'm just giving some example. on what basis the image is partition no that is internal mother it is internal and it is the line that understands now who was the one who was asking can we also try to understand more in detail about line if you open if you get the access of the program or the algorithm that is written for line then you can dig deep down into it for five man years maybe three man years maybe i don't know i'm not i'm not correctly telling you the time what happens if id is equal to 15 we haven't shown what is the prediction here right ashish one second i will come to can image data can image data can be classified by using unsupervised algorithms just hierarchical algorithms no because it is whatever it is designed on okay now coming to ashish's question what happens if id is equal to 1 15 right ashish um, i'll show you what did we put here we have mentioned here that id we have mentioned number of classes is 5 right if you have 15 classes whether you have the 15 classes here or not there you can put 15 because probably the number of predictions it has done equal to 15 so 15 when you can make it 15 here there also you can make it 15 should work uh, but uh, please don't uh, try to see what will be the output try to see how it will be useful for you when there is nothing wrong even if you try making 15 but anyway. okay what are some of the cons associated with this lime approach the cons associated with this lime approach is uh again it is not perfect now as you were asking that it is not perfect because the image is not perfect someone was asking telling right can we come to a decision that it predicts dog well than the cat do you really think so the answer i gave you is maybe not because the orientation of cat is probably different because i am a human being based on that i am able to tell but if the images that are given are some objects that are used in assembling a watch let's say a small gadgets will be there right the chips will be there right if, the, if, the, if it is a major the chips then i don't know it is an expert who has to come into picture okay mm -hmm. during testing the model how come you have landed on image only because i thought image is easier but in reality we work on images we work on structured data we work on text pipeline we also we have stopped it to structure text pipeline and image pipeline we haven't stopped but in a audio and audio pipeline and video pipeline or in process time series also we have done we also have done object detection but image data i was thinking that it will be more interesting for you and easy to understand and that is important for images yes 
when lime with lime even if i ha if I have tested for some image how would how we would again implement i didn't understand your question this first come again i didn't understand your question is lime figuring out the portion of the image that the pre-trained model is looking yes perfect turning that's what yes ashish you said hello from nepal Okay, just wishing everyone. I think uh, you can clearly ask me this first. I didn't get your question. A vision transformer model, I haven't explored it, but I think it may work. I haven't, I'm not sure to answer your question on that. Apparently, so. Because it is an object, it is a, uh, it is an animal detection classification classifier, right? It is not a grass detection classifier. We have tried all the possible methods. This one, if you are keen, then I can connect you with my architect, my CTO. He will give you better explanation. CNN versus line. CNN is used for detection on convolution neural networks, right? In image classifier. That is used for image classifier. Lime is used for explainability of the classifier. What does maybe tracking of tracking, tracking contours of image mean? I didn't understand the okay. Yeah, all of you, you can connect me on LinkedIn. Again, if any of your company wants to use our product, you are more than welcome. Which algo we have used in Lime? Lime itself is an algorithm here. For prediction, what is the question, Ceci? Yes, for prediction. Good have done. You can try Googling and get into it. I'm sure you will get an answer there. So I'm present on Twitter. I'm present on LinkedIn. You can search for Nilima Google. And yes, we can connect there. For any any opportunities or yeah. or even if the company wants to use our product, we are there. there. Okay. We are also into skill development and have trained more than five thousand people. I think more people, many people, yeah, been awarded as. Yeah. Any other queries? Uh, uh, Ashok, there is no hard and fast rule that this is better and that is better, right? Ashish, you can contact me on LinkedIn based on your profile. I'll look into it. We can talk about it. Ashish, are you uh, fresher or are you already working somewhere? Contact me on LinkedIn. Just introduce yourself, uh, giving the context of uh, analytics with the webinar also. Otherwise, I may not, you know, right? I may not be answered. No issues, Ashish. So you will be passing out in 2023. Okay, great. So no issues. You just connect me on LinkedIn. Connect with me on LinkedIn. Mm -hmm. Was it clear for you all? The explanation? Yes, anybody else? Any doubts? We have a few more minutes to go. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Asma. Thanks, Nitesh. Thank you so much, Nilim, ma'am. Uh, on you. behalf thank of you. Analytics Vidya, I would like to thank you oh, for your time. You. And for it's delivering... great if you can put a message on my LinkedIn too. That will be helpful. Yes, ma'am. And thank you so much for delivering such a wonderful session. And uh, I am sure our audiences found it insightful. And hopefully, we can conduct more such sessions with you in the future as well. Sure, sure. Definitely. I have a passion of teaching, so I would be happy. Yeah. Thank you so much, ma'am. Sure, Harish. Yeah. Yeah, only thing if you are trying to connect me on LinkedIn, just put a message, connect, uh, I mean, bring analytics with your webinar into context. Any question, I'll be ready to answer. Yeah. Thank you, Radhika.
Harish. Thank you. Bye. Thank you, ma'am. Bye. Take care. So everyone, you guys can fill the poll, which I just uh, I have activated the poll for you guys to answer three simple questions, and uh, I will also send the um, the entire code via mail. Uh, we will talk to ma'am personally. You can search for Nilima Wobugari. I have typed my name over here. There is on the internet as of now. There is only one. So, yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, yes, ma'am. Uh, your name I forget. Par. 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 Okay. Uh, Parth. Sorry. Parth. So connect me back. Uh, then I'll share the code that you are asking. Okay. Yes. Sure, ma'am. Sure. Thank Take you. Care. Take care, ma'am. All right, so everyone, please fill up the polls and uh, I hope you enjoyed this session. And, you know, uh, learning happens like this only. We learn a few things. Uh, we can't learn everything in a dedicated amount of hour, right? So data hour is all about initializing that learning potential within yourself, right? For example, we learned a few topics today, but I'm sure that all of you might have not understood everything, but that's not important. What's important is that you showed up, you were introduced to a topic where you at least gave yourself a head start. So now you can work towards that topic individually as well. You can contact to ma'am for different links to different articles, to different YouTube videos. You can refer analytics with the uh, articles in order to understand these topics even more. So that's how learning is done. All right. So you can't watch one video and learn everything, but slowly and gradually over a period of time, you will learn things because machine learning, I myself am a, a data analyst fresher. So I can tell you that from my personal experience that learning will happen over a period of time and you will learn slowly, but be consistent in your learnings. And uh, uh, that's about it, guys. All right.